Hey folks, good morning. Good to see you on this Tuesday morning. Today is a special Tuesday morning, May the 10th. It also happens to be... My birthday! What? My birthday. Your what? My birthday. Your birthday. Your birthday today is Lily's birthday. She's seven years old today. Seven day. years old. Time to time to get a job. We decided yay. she was gonna go backwards. <laughs> yay! Today, right? She says yay. You yeah, said she's you were going five, backwards. right? No. 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 Alright. Well, good morning. Good morning. Glad you guys are, are on on here today. It's good to be with you. Good to see you. And uh yeah. Tuesday morning. Uh, got your coffee. Got my coffee. There you go. Here's, it's good. I did not just spill that. Um, a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, good to be with you. Good to see you. Hey, Aaron. Hey, yeah. There's a hole in my cup. You want to get me a, a There's napkin? There's a hole in my cup? There's yes. A hole in his mouth. <laughs> All right, good to be with you. Uh, yes, today's Lily's birthday, uh, and to celebrate her birthday, we're going to work. So Yay. that's what we're doing. Uh, but good to be with you. Good to see you. Yep. So tonight, tonight is Gavin's last baseball practice for the season, and. Uh, Thursday is Nathan's last baseball game, and Friday is Gavin's last baseball game. Aiden finished on Saturday, so so that's what it looks like. So if, if you're bored Thursday night or you have some free time, Thursday night Nathan is playing baseball at Oak Street at 7 p.m. Oak Street Complex, it's... Uh, John Young and Oak Street, kind of across from the post office right there, if you know where that is in Kissimmee. And then on Friday evening at 7 p.m., Gavin plays. Gavin's team actually plays for the championship um, on, on Friday at 7. And these fields are at the Den John Park, actually just around the corner from the church. So if you know where that is, you know where the aquatic center is back behind there. So... If you aren't doing anything, you want to come out and, and watch some local sports, uh, you're more than welcome to come on out. All right? But good to see you. Good to be on here. Uh, let's start with a joke and get started. So uh, if you if you haven't heard yet, uh, in my part-time, I've started um, this online dating site for chickens. It's not my full day-to-day -day job. I just do it to make hens meet. Oh my gosh, that was a terrible <laughs> joke. That was a good joke. That was not a good oh, joke. It was. Get it, hens meet. <coughs> I have one for you. Hey, hey, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. You have another one? I don't, I got a few for Oh, okay. It. It's going to be a time. All right, be a little bit. All you, right. got, you got plenty of time. I got time. All right. Hey. That joke now, <laughs> just to, to, to quantify and clarify, that joke was courtesy of Diana Herring. So, if it's bad, it's her fault. If it's good, it's my fault in the way I delivered it. Oh, Craig says, oh, bad. Uh, yes. No, that was, I thought that was good. That was good. Just do it to make hens meet. I am in agreement with Pastor Craig. You have another one? Yeah. Okay. You know one of the perks about living in Switzerland? What's one of the perks of living in Switzerland? The flag's a big plus. Ha <laughs> ha, the flag's a big plus. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, what a real herring. That's good. That's good. Okay, let's jump in this morning. Um, on our Tuesday and Thursday mornings, we've been talking about goals and goal setting and, and why goals are important, all that. And so we're going to kind of continue that theme this morning and discuss why why setting a big goal, uh, a much better flag joke, yes, uh, why setting a big goal can be exciting at first, but also it can be overwhelming. In fact, looking at a, at a big goal in front of you can make you kind of afraid, right? So, 
How do we respond in faith instead of fear? Well, I'm going to give you four ways this morning. I'm going to give you four ways, all right? Uh, So this is how we respond to God's plans to goals in faith instead of fear. Number one, we acknowledge God's presence. We acknowledge God's presence. Uh, you, you can be confident. And I want you to hear this. You can be confident. Uh oh, something fall? <laughs> you can be confident in knowing that God is with you, that He is working through every circumstance and situation in your life, including your big goals. He does. Uh, this is what the Bible says, and I'm going to share with you a, a scripture. And pop it up here on the screen. It says, uh, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Deuteronomy 38, 31.8. This is, this is a good one to memorize. All right? This is a good one to memorize, folks. Uh, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Uh, that's, that's important. That's important. Don't be afraid. I heard one point um, uh, someone say, I think it was a preacher or an evangelist, somebody say that the Bible says 365 times, do not be afraid. Well, how many days are there? Now, am I 100% accurate on that number? No, but it does say do not be afraid quite a few times, right? So one, we acknowledge God's presence because he's always with us. That's important. Yes, he's always with us. Next, we watch for signs of God's work in your life. We watch for those signs. The bigger the dream, the longer it might take to accomplish it. You might not see uh, the fruit of your labor at first, but look for little shoots sticking up out of the ground, right? God's working. Even when even when it's not obvious, even when it's, it's not blatantly in your face, look what's happening. Uh, God is working. Trusting that God is working will help keep you from fear and discouragement. It will. Keep working towards your goal keep working towards that goal and in time you're going to see God's blessing. So first we acknowledge his presence, right? We acknowledge God's presence and then two, we watch for signs of God at work in our lives. That's important. The third thing is is we stand on God's promises in scripture. We stand on his promises. When when we set a goal, don't focus on the problem, instead focus on the promise. Find a promise in God's word that will take you to that goal. Um I call these things, now it sounds bad, right? But if I'm having issues with uh, something technological, um, uh, lighting, uh, video, computer something, uh, something on the phone or tablet, if I'm having issues with that, um, I don't have the skill and knowledge to get into the nitty gritty program and take the, the, the circuit board apart and redo stuff. But what I can do is I can find a workaround. I can find another opportunity to get to the goal that I want to get to. So if you stand on God's promises, focus on focus on the promise instead of the problem. Genesis tells the story of Abraham giving his chief servant a big goal to travel to a faraway land to, to find a wife for Abraham's son. And when the servant begins to wonder if, if he can ever accomplish it, Abraham reassures his servant by telling by telling him by saying. Uh, and, and remembering this promise that Abraham received from God. And I want you to hear this. The Lord will send his angel before you to help you get a wife for my son there. Genesis 24-7. There's been a promise given. Now we just go out and do it. Oh, can you stop shaking the table, buddy? Thanks. Uh, when, when, you have a, when you have a goal that you know is given by God, there's, there's a, there's, they're always tied to a promise. You can wait in that faith, in that fear, trusting that God will honor his promise. We can wait. We can do that. So number one, we acknowledge God's presence. That's important. Number two, we watch for signs of God's work in your lives. That's important too. Then three, we stand on God's promises in scripture. We stand on God's promises. And then fourth and last, believe in the goodness of God's plan. You believe in the goodness of God's plan. How do you know that God's plans are even good for you? Well, I want you to hear this. And this this is a fact. The Bible includes more than 7,000 promises of God's goodness toward you. Owen. Owen, stop shaking the table. 
The Bible includes more than 7,000 promises of God's goodness toward you because he wants you to learn to trust him, to have faith instead of fear. That's important. God might not send an angel to go before you as you work towards your goal. He might not. He may, he may very well do that, but he might not. And that's okay. That's okay. We don't always need to have that angel in front of us, do we? Dozens and time, dozens of times in Scripture, God has said, I'll be with you no matter where you go. I'll be with you no matter where you go. I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. There's this, God's reminding us. He's always going to be with us. So whatever goal that God has put in front of you today, choose to respond with faith instead of fear as you watch for signs of, of work and of his work in your life. That's important. Respond and believe in his goodness towards you. So let's go over those four just really quickly. Uh, number one, we acknowledge his presence, right? We acknowledge his presence. Number two, we watch for signs so that we can be encouraged along the way. Number three, we, we stand on God's promises in, in scripture. We stand on his promises in, in the book of truth, right? And then we believe in the goodness of God's plans. So whatever, whatever goal he has in store for you, whatever goal he has that you're working on right now, uh, trust in him. Trust in him. So those promises are key because that shows that we're growing in faith rather than just trying to make it on our own. Folks, the world needs to see that type of hope. Um, that there is a testimony to how good God is and how he continues to work among us. So we can be that living testimony. Remember Sunday we talked about being a living sacrifice. The only problem with being a living sacrifice is that sacrifice can crawl off the altar. So we, we stay, we continually, uh, decision by decision, maintain that idea of being a living sacrifice. And then we go out and we show and we be that living hope. We be that picture that, that people need to see. Sometimes the only Jesus they're ever going to see or they're ever going to hear is you. And so take that opportunity to be a witness, to be a living functioning witness in our culture today with a kingdom mindset guys love y'all appreciate you hope you're off to a good start today i kept it under 15 minutes that was good um and anything reach out to us let us know we'll be in the office for a little bit stuff going on um and then uh we are going to be celebrating later uh, uh a s brand new seven-year-old so all right guys Appreciate you. We will see you again very, very soon. All right? Many blessings. Remember, as God is a blessing to you, make sure that you find that opportunity to be a blessing to someone else. Take care. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.